Hi there. In this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to, I built the uh, rechargeable iron carbon cell. That's uh, the ba a battery with an iron anode and a carbon-based cathode. And then I'll uh, later dem demonstrate it powering the electric uh, vehicle. Okay, here I have laid out the uh, basic components of this cell. Uh, first up, I have the anode collector that later will be uh, painted with active carbon material. It's made from five thousandths thick, that's uh, 0 0.1 millimeters graph foil. Very thin, but it's, it's so thin that it's very easy to tear. So uh, what I did was, but I wanted the lightweight uh, of it. So I laminated one side of it with uh, regular uh, plastic laminating pouch material. And so that, this is how the uh, material's laid up. First you have your uh, printer paper, then you put on top of that the graph foil, and then you lay your uh, plastic laminating material, one sheet on top of that, and the, run it through the hot rollers on the uh, sealing machine. And when you when you get it done, it's it looks like this here, uh, and that's all you have to do is is uh, cut out whatever size uh, electrode that you're that you want to test with, and it makes it nice because uh, it's actually protected on one side by paper until you need you need it and you cut it out, and then you have your your nice uh, cathode material. Also over here, you can see that I, I added some uh, Kapton tape uh, to this electrode because it tends to tear right at this junction here, the, uh, the tab lead and the, uh, the main part of the, the electrode. Okay. Next up is the separator material, which I made from filter paper. But uh, it's not necessary to use this exact same material. I'll show you what I did use. Just if you're curious here, it's, it's shark skin material. Uh, large sheets of uh, filter paper uh, uh, right here. I'm going to read the label. But <clears throat> like I said, it's not necessary to use that. You could just use ordinary uh, absorbent kitchen toweling instead of the... Uh, the filter paper. All right, next up, I have the uh, iron anode. And this is material cut from 2,000 thick low carbon steel shim stock. And this is the material, the, the box right here that contains a roll of it. And it's 2,000 thick. Uh, 0 0.051 millimeters and one very important thing about this iron anode is that it has to be iron it it cannot be stainless steel I repeat do not use stainless steel for the anode because it, your cell will not work actually on eBay I got fooled and was really confused for a while there why my cell wasn't working because the seller said that it was 100% iron uh, but come to find out it was actually stainless steel and my battery just it just never the cell never worked so there's an actually uh, an easy way of testing uh, to see if you do have carbon or uh, carbon steel or uh, stainless steel I'll, sh I'll show you the, the test here That's all you have to do is you get your, your material that you want to test, your, your iron that you want to test. Make sure it's the, all oil is removed from it. And you could, use, you could use acetone or alcohol or just scrub it with uh, soapy, hot, warm soapy water to get off the grease. And then you scour it up with sandpaper or emery cloth. Uh, then next you 
just take some salt solution, ordinary table salt in, in water solution, and put a few drops on the sheet you want to test, and just leave it overnight. And then in the the next day, when you look at it, it should be all dried up. And one, uh, this this is how the pure iron or carbon, low carbon steel iron should look. You should definitely see the rust, uh, the reddish iron oxide formed on it. And this this piece here is undesirable stainless steel. Uh, it's pretty much just salt that's evaporated on, uh, evaporated on that. And you don't want that. You want to see the rust to make sure that it's iron and not an alloy that has uh, chromium or nickel in it. Okay. Last up here, I have the uh, material I used for sealing the battery in a pouch ca type case. And here I'm using a uh, sheet of plastic cut from a seal a meal pouch. You could really use any polyethylene or polypropylene bag material, but uh, you, have to, you have to play around with the settings to, to get the right heat. It, can't be, it, it might be either too hot or too cold, so you have to play around with the settings. Uh, I got this method, actually, it's, it works really well from K, KREX 2's YouTube channel, and I put the link in the bottom of uh, the, this video description. And later I'll show you how I seal this cell with this method. Okay. Uh, the next step is to coat the laminated graph foil collector with uh, active carbon material. Uh, the area of this collector is two by two square inches. I'm not gonna show you how to uh, make the active carbon ink in this video because uh, formulations are already covered in great detail on other YouTube channels such as Robert Murray Smith and KREX2. Uh, the links to these channels are in the description below. But I will say that it is mainly uh, made up of uh, sulfur doped sugar charcoal with a uh, CMC SBR binder uh, and water as the vehicle. Once it is well mixed, uh, I just pan it on with a uh, flat, wide brush, just like this. Okay, now it's just uh, left to dry. <clears throat> you can speed up the drying if you want by uh, blowing with a hair dryer. Okay, uh, the next step is cell assembly. Here is how I assemble the cell. First, I lay down the graph oil collector coated with the active carbon. Then I put on top of that the, the uh, filter paper separator. Line that up. I'm doing this on top of a piece of loose side. It lifts it off the tray and it makes it a little bit easier to work, to work on. Okay, now uh, the separator is now saturated with uh, electrolyte, which is two molar ferric chloride. Okay, so that now is just left long enough so uh, both the separator and the active carbon coating is saturated with electrolyte. 
About 20 minutes is probably long enough. Okay. The cell's been uh, soaking in the electrolyte for about 20 minutes. Let that soak in. And the last thing it do is add the uh, iron anode. It's a good idea to uh, clean this off of any grease or, and then uh, sand it with sandpaper or emery cloth. And the anode, iron anode is just laid on top uh, like so. And that's it. The cell is completed. And uh, now we will, I'll show you how to seal it in the plastic pouch. Okay, we're ready to uh, seal our cell in a plastic pouch. And here is, uh, lay down here first, is just uh, ordinary uh, kitchen baking parchment. You lay a piece of that down there, it just keeps it away from the iron. And then you lay your plastic, first of the plastic sheets on top of that, your cell. Goes on next. And your second sheet of plastic goes on there. And then you fold the parchment, the other part of the parchment over on top of it. Okay, now you gotta make sure that you have your uh, iron at the right temperature. You have to play around with the settings as I said before and you just Go around the edges not on the cell itself, but kind of all around the uh, the edges And that's it. Just trim it off and uh, we're ready to test. Okay, we're at the uh, electric vehicle uh, test track, otherwise known as my kitchen floor. And the battery's been charged uh, for five minutes at uh, 1.65 uh, volts DC. And it's in there now, we just have to connect it. I just push this uh, electro down into the clip. And there starts the motor, and there it goes. I'll take a minute to describe how I modified the solar car kit to run on my uh, iron carbon battery. I bought one of these solar car kits from eBay for about $2 US. I've seen them recently actually for 99 cents with free shipping on eBay. Here's what the uh, package looks like. That's the kit there. Just so, uh, search for solar car kit on eBay and you'll actually find dozens of them to choose from. I put the, the uh, car kit together without the solar cell and uh, installed uh, two metal clips, one here and one here, uh, that I made from uh, stainless steel sheet. Uh, then that that's what the tab, uh, battery tabs connect into, uh, just like that. And because the, the battery cell is, is pretty top heavy, uh, when installed, I attach two spring wire supports here. 
uh, to hold the battery in, uh, in place. You can make them from any uh, stiff springy wire such as piano wire or even a, like a piece of uh, broken guitar spring. I attached them to the uh, uh, chassis by wrapping it around the rail and then uh, securing it with uh, a, a drop of epoxy glue. I'm still pretty amazed that this small uh, homemade battery can move a load of 26 grams, which is seven times its own weight. After I made uh, a few car test runs, I, I took the battery and ran some tests with the EB electronic load tester that a lot of you are already familiar with. And then I also cycle tested uh, for a few hours with a uh, BA 500 win battery analyzer. And the res results of both of these tests are shown at the end of the video. Well, I hope you found this video interesting and I would be happy to answer any questions in the comments about this build. Thanks for watching.